4K gaming is awesome. The high resolution means everything's super sharp, detailed, and even more immersive. So if you're interested in upgrading to 4K, give me a few minutes and I'll run you through everything you need to know about buying the right 4K gaming monitor for you, including sizes, panel types, G-Sync refresh rates, and even HDR. So as I'm sure you already know, a 4K monitor has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. That's 8.3 million pixels, four times as many as you get on a Full HD 1080p monitor. So you can get a lot more detail, but obviously it also requires a lot more processing power from your PC. So before you make the jump to 4K, make sure your PC is powerful enough. The good news though is that buying a 4K monitor doesn't have to break the bank. Behind me is a 28 inch Samsung U28E590D. It's a couple of years old now and doesn't have any fancy high end gaming features, but it's a decent 4K monitor and costs just over 300 pounds, which isn't bad at all. So there's a good range of budget 4K monitors on the market, like this Samsung or the AOC U2879VF, the Asus PB287Q, or Acer Predator XB281HK, to name just three, and they're all under £400. Although they do use cheaper TN panels, which don't have quite the color accuracy or the better viewing angles of an IPS, like the Dell P2715Q, which is a great all-rounder, but as the title of the video says, we're here to talk about 4K gaming monitors. And actually that's where things are getting pretty interesting. We're going through a bit of transition at the moment in 2017. The current crop of high-end 4K gaming monitors like the ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQ or Acer Predator XB271HK, which each cost around 700 pounds, offering 4K, IPS panels, and Nvidia G-Sync, but they're all limited to 60 hz refresh rates and use older DisplayPort 1.2 connections. But now we're seeing brands like Asus, Acer and LG showing off high refresh rate and even high dynamic range 4K monitors which make use of DisplayPort 1.4 or even USB Type-C. For example, the new ASUS ROG Swift PG27UQ and Acer Predator XB272 HDR pretty much tick every single box for the ultimate gaming monitor. 27 inches, 4K, IPS, 144Hz refresh, G-Sync, and even HDR. And if you're worried about HDR affecting input lag, that's where G-Sync comes in. Not only does it reduce screen tearing and smooth out your frame rate, particularly at 4K where your uh, frame rate's gonna be a bit lower, but it also handles all the HDR stuff behind the scenes through the graphics card rather than the monitor. And getting one with a low response time and low input lag is crucial for gaming. Anything under five milliseconds and 15 milliseconds respectively is good enough, but make sure you check these in the reviews of the monitors you want before you buy it. So along with all these fancy acronyms and technologies, as you'd expect, these super high-end gaming monitors come with an eye-watering price. When the ASUS PG27UQ is released later in 2017, it's going to retail for around $2,000 or around £1,900. So um, maybe I'll just get one. But one monitor I am actually very excited for, and at $999 almost seems good value compared to those other ones, is the new LG 32 UD99. 32 inches, 4K, a 10-bit IPS panel, HDR and FreeSync. It's great looking too, and while NVIDIA gamers will be disappointed there's no G-Sync and there's no higher than 60 hertz refresh rate, it's also half the price of those ASUS monitors. But I also like the bigger 32 inch size. 27 inches is the most popular size for 4K monitors, but personally, I don't think it's really big enough to fully appreciate all that extra detail, the higher resolution. For example, the 32 inch G-Sync enabled Acer Predator XB32 1HK is a great option for gamers and costs around 750 pounds. But if you wanna go even bigger, the Philips BD-M4037UW is a massive 40 inch curved 4K monitor for 600 pounds. If you wanna find out more about that, you can click on my review at the top right. But the other thing to consider is, while it's great to see brands pushing monitor technology forward, and on paper, 144Hz 4K sounds awesome, in reality, it'd be very hard and actually very expensive to fully take advantage of it, especially in games. Even with the MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X card, which I have in this PC here, at 4K with ultra settings, most games only just go above 60 FPS. So taking full advantage of a 144Hz 4K monitor won't be easy unless you play older or less demanding games or are happy to turn down graphical settings a bit. So if you want high refresh rates, I reckon your best bet is to stick to 1440p and also you'll save a ton of money on the monitor as well. So choosing the right 4K monitor can be a bit tricky. You're always going to pay a premium for 4K and as soon as you add gaming features like G-Sync or opt for a color accurate IPS display then uh, you're looking at around six to seven hundred pounds, not cheap. And then consider the next gen high refresh rate and HDR gaming monitors as well and then you can kind of well triple that price almost. But that always happens with new technologies and over the next year or so prices will come down. 
But unless you're willing to pay two grand for a 4K gaming monitor right now, or happy to wait a couple of years for prices to fall, there's still loads of great 4K monitors out now, or coming very soon. And I've put a list of my favorite and recommended 4K monitors in the description below this video if you wanna find out more. And if you're interested in HDR, I'll be making a separate video on HDR monitors specifically, including what you can watch on them, how well they work with games consoles, and you know if they're actually worth paying more for. So stay tuned and subscribe for that coming soon. So I think that for most people, 4K PC gaming is still too new and too expensive to seriously consider investing in right now. It's not just the cost of the monitor, but also the high-end graphics card and the processor you need to get good frame rate in games at 4K. But it's also exciting to see the next generation of 4K monitors with high refresh rates and HDR coming out in 2017. Although we'll be waiting a little while before they actually become affordable for most of us. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below and check out my recommended list in the description. Thank you very much for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you like the video. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.